நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் சமீபத்தில் நான் பேசின தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கில மொழிபெயர்ப்போட ஆங்கிலத்தில் பேசப்பட்டு தீபா அவர்களால் பேசப்பட்டு மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு நல்ல வரவேற்பை பெற்று வருகின்றன அப்படிங்கிறது எல்லோருக்குமே தெரியும் கிட்டத்தட்ட நாற்பதுக்கும் மேற்பட்ட வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் என்னுடைய தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்த்து போடப்பட்டு வருகின்றன மிகுந்த வரவேற்பு எல்லோருமே நல்லா வெல்கம் பண்ணுறீங்க தெரியுது இப்பொழுது ஏற்கனவே நான் பேசிய பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒவ்வொரு தனித்தனி கிரகங்கள் அதாவது பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் சூரியன் சந்திரன் செவ்வாய் ராகு உள்ளிட்ட ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் எந்த நிலையில் எப்படி இருந்தால் நல்ல பலன்களை தரும் என்பதை பேசிய ஒரு மிகுந்த வரவேற்பை பெற்ற பன்னிரெண்டு லக்ன வீடியோக்கள் இப்போது ஒவ்வொன்றாக ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்க்கப்பட்டு அடுத்தடுத்து உங்களுக்கு வர இருக்கிறது இதில் இன்னொரு சிறப்பு என்னென்னா அவ்வப்போது உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் பேசிய சில விளக்கங்கள் சில சூற்றுமங்களை கூட தீபா அவர்கள் வந்து இந்த நடுவில் இந்த பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் தனித்தனியே என்ன பலன்களை செய்யும் என்ற ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு நடுவே என்னுடைய உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் சொன்ன கருத்துக்களையும் இணைத்து தனித்தனி வீடியோவாக வெளியிட இருக்கிறார்கள் வழக்கம் போலவே இந்த ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு உங்களுடைய வரவேற்பு இருக்கும் என்பதை நம்புகிறேன் வாழ்த்துக்கள் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் பிராட் யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த தமிழ் வீடியோ of a renowned astrologer jyotish mahaguru aditya guruji the link of the original version that is the tamil video is given in the description box of this video this is astrologer deepa and i am presenting you the english version of the tamil video in my last video i explained about the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of libra ascendant In this video I'm going to explain the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of Scorpio ascendant. For the native of Scorpio ascendant moon is Padagadivadi and also the lord of house of dharma. I have written a lot of articles explaining that when a Padagadivadi will turn into Bhagyadivadi You can read those articles to get some idea about it. When moon resides in the ascendant house for the native of Scorpio ascendant, it gets debilitated. When Padagadibadi gets debilitated, it is good in a certain way. But what I insist is that Padagasthana should not become strong. well for the native of scorpio ascendant moon which is bakyadipadi that is lord of dharma or bagya should not get debilitated the ninth house lord should never get debilitated the second level of importance is given to the moon as padagadipadi a planet that is padagadipadi does not deliver padaga to all the ascendants a planet that is padaga dibadi will deliver padaka to only one among 1000 people or one among 1 lakh people i have explained this in many of my videos having said this when moon resides in ascendant house itself that is in scorpio and if moon is waxing and heading closely towards purnima or when it is purnima and when it has got connection of natural benefits such as jupiter or venus it does not deliver worse effects when moon gets debilitated in the ascendant house there will be a lot of confusion in the mind of the native especially when moon is pabatwa in other words when moon is heading towards amavasya or when it is amavasya and residing in the ascendant house it will give a lot of confusion in the mind therefore in general when the moon gets debilitated 
or when it is pabatva it is not considered to be good there is another case where a strange parivartan will happen that is mars will be in the ninth house where it gets debilitated that is in cancer and moon will be in the ascendant house where it gets debilitated in scorpio and these two planets will be in parivartan this is called niche parivartan when niche parivartan happens there will not be much worse effects please try to understand that when moon gets debilitated it should get subhatva and it should have some light energy for the native of scorpio ascendant since moon is padagadipadi and it gets debilitated we can conclude 100% that the moon will not have the ability to do padaga however from another point of view the moon is the lord of the house of bhagya and it should not get spoiled you have to understand when lord of the house of luck will act and when the very same planet which is padagadipadi will act having said all these when moon has got light energy residing in the ascendant house there are no worse effects moon will deliver a good mother and a good mind if moon is pabatva or when it is in connection with saturn or rahu then all these will be spoiled that is moon will not deliver a good mind or a good mother now let me explain the effects of moon in the second house which is sagittarius when moon resides in second house what will happen as per bhavad bhavam though it resides in the sixth house to its own house that is cancer which is house of padaga it is considered to be good because moon resides in the house of sagittarius and the house lord is jupiter the ninth house lord is in the second house which is considered to be auspicious in this house if moon is in connection with jupiter or mercury it is considered to be more auspicious because this establishes the connection between the lord of the second house ninth house and the 11th house this will deliver immense benefits to the native when the planets jupiter moon and mercury are in conjunction in the second house it will deliver crores of money to the native since the lord of house of luck the lord of house of wealth the lord of house of gain are in conjunction a native who is scorpio ascendant and sagittarius rashi is considered to be good now let me explain the effects of moon in the third house which is capricorn when native is scorpio ascendant and capricorn rashi there will not be much worse effects when the moon resides in capricorn it is heading towards digbala that is directional strength when the moon resides in capricorn it will aspect its own house cancer if the moon is waxing moon heading closely towards purnima or if it is purnima and aspects its own house cancer then both the parents will be in good status when the moon is strong the native of scorpio ascendant will have a good father and good mother what is the reason moon is the lord of ninth house which signifies father and of course moon is the natural significator of the mother therefore when moon is strong it indicates that both father and mother will be of good status having said all these when moon is waxing closely towards purnima 
or venetus purnima it will strengthen the house of cancer which is the ninth house by its aspect and as a result it will deliver a good mother and a good father to the native of scorpio ascendant now let me explain the effects of moon in the fourth house which is aquarius moon will attain digbala in the fourth house and moon will aspect the 10th house to the ascendant house by being 9th house lord this will establish 50% of dharma karma dipadi yoga why is it only 50% in case if sun resides in the 10th house and moon aspects the 10th house and the 10th house lord together then it establishes 100% dharma karma dipadi yoga here definitely moon will deliver immense benefits therefore when moon resides in fourth house it is good now let me explain the effects of moon in the fifth house which is pisces the lord of one trine that is the ninth house resides in another trine which is the fifth house this position is really considered to be good when moon resides in the fifth house it should be waxing when moon resides either in fourth house or fifth house it is considered to be good now let me explain the effects of moon in the sixth house which is aries as per bhavat bhavam moon will be in the quadrant house to its own house cancer that is in the 10th house and it will be in the 6th house to the ascendant though it is in the 6th house to the ascendant it is not such a great shortcoming the combination of nadu of scorpio ascendant and aries rashi is okay when moon resides in 6th house it should be subhatva it should not have uh, the connection of malefics like saturn or rahu when moon resides in aries mars becomes the lord of the ascendant and the lord of rashi as well there is certain auspiciousness when rashi lord and lagna lord or the same i explained uh, the same sort even for taurus ascendant and taurus rashi well now let me explain the effects of moon in the 7th house which is taurus moon gets exalted in the house of taurus here please don't consider that padagadibadi gets exalted in the 7th house because lord of padaga delivers padaga to only one among 1000 people or one among 1 lakh people if only the lord of pataka resides in pataka house if only lord of pataka resides in the pataka house and stays strong a delivers padaka some people misunderstand the concept of padaka and they say that a person will not get a good wife when padaka dibadi gets exalted in the 7th house if moon is waxing and subhatva in the 7th house then it will deliver a wonderful wife to the native the completeness of learning astrology lies in choosing the rules and applying them at the right place please try to understand the rules and the criteria to apply them having said this for the native of scorpio ascendant when moon gets exalted in taurus and when it is subhatva it will deliver a good mind good wife and a good mother to the native it will be delivered without any shortcomings when moon is waxing when it has its light energy and when it is in connection with jupiter or venus that is natural benefits this will definitely happen now let me explain the effects of moon in the 8th house that is gemini it is not considered to be good because moon resides in the house of mercury moon will be disturbed in the house of mercury for the native of scorpio ascendant 
any planet in the eighth house will be disturbed. The moon can escape from this discomfort only if it has light energy. In case if moon is Amavasya or when it is heading closely towards Amavasya, then it will be very worse. The moon will deliver worse effects to the native. Therefore, moon should not be in the 8th house to the ascendant house. Moon will deliver worse effects when it is Pabatwa and when, is, when it is Subatwa, what will happen? It will deliver life abroad. It will not do worse effects. But when moon is Pabatwa, it will deliver very worse effects to the native. The only antidote is Subatwa of the moon. The combination of Scorpio Ascendant and Gemini Rashi is not good. If Moon is Subhatva, then it will be good. Or when Moon has got the connection of natural benefits like Jupiter or Venus, Moon will not deliver worse effects. This is the point that you have to remember. And when Moon has got Drigvala, the connection of natural benefits is good. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the ninth house which is Cancer. When moon resides in its own house Cancer, it becomes very strong. It definitely increases the nature of Padaka. In this situation if moon is Purnima, that is full moon, it is not considered to be good at all. This is a very important point for prediction. Here the moon should not be a full moon. When will the moon reside as full moon here? During Thaipusam, that is the month of Pausha, mid-January to mid-February, and Pushyami Nakshatra, moon will reside as full moon in the house of Cancer. If the native of Scorpio ascendant is Cancer Rashi, and born during the month of Pausha and Pushyami Nakshatra, definitely the native will be affected. The native will be affected at least a little. Here when the moon has gone, the connection of Saturn or Rahu, it is good. Even if at least it has not got the connection of Rahu, it should definitely get the connection of Ketu. What is the reason? Because Rahu the conjunction will affect the moon. Rahu will affect the moon when it is in conjunction with it. This is the greatest subtlety of the astrological rules. For the native of Scorpio Ascendant and Cancer Rashi, if moon resides very strong without any Pabatwa connection, then definitely moon will deliver its Padaga effects. One more important point you have to keep in mind while predicting is you have to check at which age the native is undergoing the major planetary period of the moon. I have seen in many natal charts that as soon as the major planetary period of the moon starts, it will start to deliver Pataka. Therefore, in this situation, if the light energy of the moon is less or when it is Pabatwa, then it is good. An aspect of Saturn or an aspect of Mars or Rahu connection or even Ketu connection will change the situation. This sort of malafic connection will reduce the intensity of the Padaka nature of the moon. There are situations where we say too much of goodness is not really good. This is one such situation. Having said all these, when moon resides in Cancer with great light energy, it is not good. Please remember this point. This Padaga effect can be reduced even when moon is spoiled in Navamsha. Or the moon should be spoiled by the connection of Ketu or by any connection of any other malafic. When moon is in connection with Ketu, it will be Grahan Yoga. Even the aspect of Mars or Saturn will change this shortcoming. 
when moon has got connection of a malefic it will not do pataka if pataka should be delivered 100% to the native moon should be filled with 100% light energy without any malefic connection in this particular case definitely moon should not get the connection of jupiter or venus to deliver 100% padaka now let me explain the effects of moon in the 10th house this establishes dharma karma dipati yoga as the 9th house lord resides in the 10th house moon should be subhatva when it resides in the 10th house moon resides in the house whose house lord is a friendly planet to it if the native is scorpio ascendant and leo rashi it is an added benefit based on the subhatva of the moon you have to make predictions now let me explain the effects of the moon in the 11th house that is virgo when moon resides in the 11th house it is considered to be good though moon resides in the house whose house lord is also the lord of the 8th house it is still good because for the only reason moon is residing in the 11th house when the 9th house lord resides in the 11th house it is considered to be good based on this concept the moon will deliver immense benefits when it is subhatva now let me explain the effects of the moon in the 12th house this will not deliver much worse effects though lord of 9th house resides in the 12th house it gains subhatva by residing in the house of venus moreover moon will be in the quadrant house to its own house when it resides in libra when moon resides in the 12th house libra it will not deliver much worse effects when moon is subhatva while residing in the 12th house it will make the native to cross overseas and it will deliver luck when the native travels to a distant place in my next video i'm going to explain the natal chart of a leading actor in tamil film industry who's loved by the people i hope you can guess it well this is question time moon being padagadipadi when it gets exalted in taurus will it deliver padaga to the native of scorpio ascendant please write your answers in the comment section of this video as per the request of many subscribers we have added the playlist link of all english videos so far published the link of aditya guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both ios and android users the link of google play store app is also given in the description box that is available for only android users the tamil version of this video is also available please check the description box we thank you for the great feedback you give through comments and by email please keep writing to us astro.writeus@gmail.com thank you